most important, you're here tonight to see Arsenic and Old Lace. Thank you for coming. Enjoy the show. I have no appetite for dinner now. I eat too many of those biscuits just to taste that lovely jam. Oh, but you haven't tried the quince. We put a little apple in with it to take the tartness out. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, well, then I'll send some over for you. No, you keep it right here so I can be sure to have the biscuits with it. Oh, I do hope they won't make us use that terrible imitation flour again. What with this war trouble. <laughs> it may not be very charitable of me, but I almost come to the conclusion that this Mr. Hitler isn't a Christian. If only Europe are on another planet. Europe, sir! Yes, Teddy. Point your gun the other way! Uh, Teddy? Uh, to the west. There's your enemy. There's your danger. Japan! Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yes, uh, Teddy. No, no, no more talk about Europe, our uh, Aunt Arnie. More about the canal. Uh, well, let's not talk about war. Would you like another cup of tea? Oh, dear? no, thank you, Aunt Abby. Dr. Harper? Uh, uh, no, uh, Miss uh, Abbott, I must say that war and violence seem far removed from these surroundings. Oh, yes. It is peaceful here, isn't it? Peaceful. The virtues of another day, right here in this house. The virtues of candlelight, good manners, and low tax. It's one of the oldest houses in Brooklyn. It's just as it was when Grandfather Brewster built and furnished it. Well, except for the electricity, and we use that as little as possible. It was Mortimer who persuaded us to put it in. I can understand that. Your nephew Mortimer seems to only live by electric light. Well, the poor boy has to work so late. We're so glad that it's Elaine that Mortimer takes to the theater with him. Uh, Teddy! Teddy! Your brother Mortimer will be here a little later. Oh, delighted! I understand uh, that Mortimer's taking Elaine to the theater again tonight. Well, it's a new experience for me to have to wait up till three o'clock in the morning for my daughter to be brought home. Oh, Reverend Harper, I do hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well. Oh, well, we'd feel so terrible if you did, Sister Martha and I, since it was here in our home that your daughter first met Mortimer. Let me say immediately, Miss Abbott, that I think Mortimer is a worthy gentleman. But I have watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter with some trepidation. For one reason only, Miss Abbott. Oh, you mean his stomach? Stomach? His dyspepsia. He's bothered with it so, poor boy. No, no, I must be frank with you. I am referring to Mortimer's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? Oh, no! Dr. Harper, Mortimer writes for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abbott, I know, but drama critics are constantly exposed oh. to the theater. And I can't help but think that some of them develop an interest in it. Oh, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Oh, yes, he writes the most terrible things about it. 
Oh, he was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. But then they just made him take this terrible night position. Mm. My, my. Well, as Mortimer says, the theater can't last much longer, and in the meantime, it's a living. I think if we just give the theater another year or two, then perhaps... Oh, well, who can that be? <laughs> oh, I'll go, Teddy, I'll go. Mr. Brophy. Hello, Miss Brewster. Mr. Klein, how are you? Very well, Miss Brewster. Well, gentlemen, what news have you brought me? Colonel, we have nothing to report. Splendid. Thank you, gentlemen. At ease. You know Dr. Harper. Sure, hello, Dr. Harper. We've come for the toys for the Christmas farm. Oh, yes. That's fine work you men are doing. Repairing discarded toys so poor children can have a happier Christmas? Well, it gives us something to do. We have to sit around the station. You get tired playing cards, then you start cleaning your gun, and the first thing you know, you've shot yourself in the foot. Oh, <laughs> what's a... Teddy, Teddy, go and get that large box from your Aunt Martha's room. And how is Mrs. Brophy? Mrs. Brophy has been terribly ill, Dr. Harper. Pneumonia. I'm... George! She's doing better, ma'am. A little weak still. Well, I'll go and get you some beef broth to take to her. Don't bother, Miss Abby. You've done so much for her already. Oh, no, it's no trouble. We made it this morning. Sister Martha is taking some to poor Mr. Benitsky just now. Well, make yourselves comfortable, all of you. She shouldn't go to all that trouble. Listen, try to stop her or her sister from doing something nice and for nothing. They don't even care how you vote. When I received my call to Brooklyn to move next door, my wife was not well. And she died, and for months before that, if I know what pure kindness and absolute generosity are, because I've known the Bruce's sister. Now, Colonel, you promise not to do that. But I have to call a meeting of the cabinet to get the release of these supplies. He used to do that in the middle of the night, until the neighbors raised Cain with us. They're all a little afraid of him anyway. Oh, he's perfectly harmless. I suppose he does think he's Teddy Roosevelt. There's a lot worse people he could think he was. It's a damn shame, though. A nice family like this hatching a cuckoo. Well, his father, the old girl's brother, was uh, some sort of a genius, wasn't he? And their father, Teddy's grandfather, <laughs> seems to me I heard he was a little crazy, too. He's crazy like a fox. Made a million dollars, though. Right here in Brooklyn? Yeah. Patent medicine. Seems he was uh, some sort of a quack. Old Sergeant Edwards remembers him. They say he used the house here as some sort of a clinic, and he used to try him out on people. Yeah, I heard he used to make mistakes occasionally, too. Yeah, but the department never bothered with him much because he was usually pretty useful on autopsies, especially poison cases. Well, whatever he did, he left his daughters fixed for life. Thank God for that. Now, did they ever spend any of it on themselves? Oh, I'm quite familiar with their charities. You don't know a tenth of it. When I was at the Missing Persons Bureau, I was trying to trace this old man that we never did find. You know, there's a renting agency that's got this house down on its list for finest rooms. They don't rent rooms, but you can bet that anybody who comes here looking for a room goes away with a good meal and probably a few dollars in their cake. It's just their way of digging up some people to do some good to. Oh, well now, isn't this nice? Good afternoon, Miss Brewster. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Brophy, Dr. Harper, Mr. Clark? How are you, Miss Brewster? We dropped in to get the Christmas toys. Oh, yes, Teddy's Army and Navy, they wear out. They're all packed. The colonel's already up after them. It seems the cabinet has to okay it first. Oh, yes, of course. I hope Mrs. Brophy is better. She's doing fine, ma'am. Your sister's getting some soup for me to take to her. Yes, we made it this morning. I just brought some to a poor old man who broke ever so many bones. Oh, Martha, you're back. How is Mr. Benitsky? Well, dear, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. The doctor was there. They're going to amputate in the morning. Can we be present? No. I asked, but they said it was against the rules of the hospital. You can't be of service, and you must spare yourself something. Well, well here's the broth, Mr. Brophy. Make sure it's good enough. Yes, ma'am. This will do fine. It'll make a lot of kids happy. That O'Malley boy is nuts about soldiers. That's General Miles. I've retired him. <laughs> what, what's this? The Oregon. Teddy, dear, put it back. Uh, no, the Oregon goes to Australia. Now, Teddy. No, I've given my word to fighting Bob Evans. But what's Teddy? the difference? What kid gets it? Bobby Evans, is he going? We'll run along, ma'am, and thank you very much. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> I must be getting along home. Before you go, Dr. Harper. George! George, the blockhouse! The blockhouse? The stairs are always San Juan Hill. 
Have you ever tried to convince him that he's not Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. He's so happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Once, a long time ago, remember, Martha, we thought that if he might be George Washington, it would be a change for him. But he stayed under the bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he'd be Mr. Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy, and what's more important, you're happy. You will see that he signs these papers. What are they? Well, Dr. Harper's made all the arrangements for Teddy to go to Happydale after we've passed on. But why should Teddy sign the papers now? Well, it's better if it's taken care of. If the Lord should suddenly take you away, well, maybe we couldn't convince Teddy to commit himself. And that would lead to an unfortunate legal procedure. Mr. Witherspoon knows to keep these on file until it's time to use them. Mr. Witherspoon? Who's he? He's head of Happy Day. Oh, yes, and Dr. Harper's made arrangements for him to stop by tomorrow or the next day to oh. meet Teddy. I must be getting home or Elaine's going to be over here looking for me. Well, give our love to Elaine. Oh, and Dr. Harper, don't think too harshly of Mortimer for being a dramatic critic. Somebody has to do these things. Did you just have tea? Isn't it rather late? Yes. And dinner's going to be late, too. So? Why? But Teddy, good news for you. You're going to Panama to dig another lock for the canal. Delighted. That's bully. Just bully. <laughs> I shall prepare at once for the journey. Oh. Oh. oh, Abby, while I was out. I couldn't wait for you. I didn't know when you would be back, and Dr. Harper was coming for tea. But all by yourself? Oh, I got an old phone. I'll run right downstairs and see. Oh, no, 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 there wasn't time, and I was all alone. Oh. 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 My God. Just look in the window seat. <laughs> oh. Well, who can that be? Mm. Oh, such commotion all day today. <laughs> oh, it's Elaine! Oh. Hello, dear! Good afternoon, Miss Abby. Good afternoon, Miss Martha. Oh, I thought Father was here. No, he just this minute left. Didn't you meet him? No, I took the shortcut to the cemetery. Mortimer hasn't come yet? Oh, no. Oh? Well, he asked me to meet him here. Do you mind if I wait? Not at all. Have a seat, dear. But we're going to speak to Mortimer about doing this to you. Oh, to him what? He was brought up to know better. When a gentleman asks a lady out, he should call for her at her house. Oh, there's something about calling for a girl at a parsonage that discourages any man who doesn't embroider. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he's done this to you once too often, and we're going to speak to him. Oh, please don't. After young men's idea of nightlife was to take me to prayer meeting. It's wonderful to go to the theater almost every night of my life. Well, it's comforting for us, too, because if Mortimer has to see those plays he has to see, at least he's sitting next to a minister's daughter. <laughs> oh, Elaine, what you must think of us not having tea cleared away by now. Oh, now, don't bother with any of the things in the kitchen till Mortimer comes All in right. and I'll come and help you. All right. Mortimer should be here any minute. Yes. Oh, Father must have been surprised after finding me at home. I better run over and say goodnight to him. Well, it's a shame you missed him, dear. If Mortimer comes, you tell him I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, hello, Mort. Hello, Elaine. Oh. Oh. oh, look who else is here. It's Aunt Martha. Oh, close, close, close. How are you, my dear? Abby, Mortimer's here. Were you uh, going out somewhere? I was just going over to tell Father not to it up for me tonight. I didn't know that was still being done, even in Brooklyn. Mortimer! Oh, Mortimer, hello! Hello, Aunt Abby. Oh, and how are you, dear? Fine. And you look well. You haven't changed much since yesterday. Oh, well, it was yesterday, wasn't it? We're seeing quite a lot of you these days. <laughs> All right, everyone, sit down and be comfortable. Abby, don't we have something to do in the... Kitchen? Hmm? You know the tea things? Oh, the tea things! Yes! Yeah. Well, just make yourselves at home! Just make yourselves at home! <laughs> well, can't you take a hint? 
No, that was pretty obvious, really. A, a lack of inventiveness, I should say. Yes, that's exactly what you'd say. Where do you want to go for dinner? Oh, I don't care. I'm not very hungry. Well, I just had breakfast. Suppose we wait until after the show. Oh, but that'll make it pretty late, won't it? Mm, not with the little stinker we're seeing tonight. From what I've heard about it, we'll be at Blake's by 10 o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. Are these plays fair to me? I've never seen you walk out in a musical. Darling, that musical isn't opening tonight. Oh, no. And you'll have to learn the rules. With a musical, there are always four changes of title and three postponements. They loved it in New Haven, but it needs a lot of work. I was hoping it was a musical. You have such a light mind. Not a bit. Musicals somehow have a humanizing effect on you. After a serious play, we join a proletariat on the subway, and I listen to a lecture on the drama. <laughs> After a musical, you take me home in a taxi, and you uh, make a few passes. Now, wait a minute, darling. That is a very inaccurate piece of reporting. Oh, I will admit that after the Berman play, you told me I had authentic beauty. And that's a hell of a thing to say to a girl. It wasn't until after our first musical you told me I had nice legs. And I had, too. Mm. You know, for a minister's daughter, you sure know a lot about life. Where'd you learn it? In the choir loft. I'll explain that to you sometime, darling. The close connection between eroticism and religion. Religion never gets as high as the choir loft. Which reminds me, I'd better run over and tell Father to please not wait up for me tonight. I'll never be able to rationalize it. What? My falling in love with a girl who lives in Brooklyn. Oh, falling in love. You're not stooping to the articulate, are you? The only way I can regain my self-respect is to keep you in New York. Oh, did you say keep? No, no, I've come to the conclusion that you're holding out for the legalities. Well, I can afford to be a good girl for quite a few years yet. And I can't wait that long. <laughs> when can we be buried in a hurry, say, tonight? Oh, I'm afraid Father will insist on officiating. Oh, God. I bet your father could make even the marriage service sound pedestrian. You're not by any chance writing a review of it, are you? Forgive me, darling. It's an occupational disease. Mm, I may give that play tonight a good review. <laughs> Don't pretend you love me that much. You better tell your father not to wait up tonight. Mm, tonight, I think I'd better tell him to wake up. I'll telephone Winchell to publish the band. Uh, yeah, nevertheless. <laughs> All right. Well... Ah, how are you, Mr. President? Ah, Mortimer, what news have you brought me? Uh, just this, Mr. President. The country is squarely behind you. Yes, I know. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Well, goodbye. 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 Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama! <laughs> Panama's the cellar. He likes to dig locks for the canal down there. You're so sweet with him. And he's very fond of you. Well, Teddy was always my favorite brother. Oh, favorite? Was there more of you? Well, we had another brother, Jonathan. Oh, I never heard of him. Your aunts never mentioned him. No, we don't like to talk about Jonathan. Jonathan was the kind of boy who liked to cut worms in two with his teeth. Oh, what became of him? Mm, I don't know. He left Brooklyn very early by request. He, he wanted to become a surgeon like grandfather, but, but he wouldn't go to medical school first, and his practice got him into trouble. Oh, oh aren't you still going to be late for the theater? Oh, we're skipping dinner. We won't have to start for another half hour. Oh, well, then I'll just leave you two alone together again. Oh, don't bother, darling. I really must run over and speak to father. Before I go out with you, he likes to pray over me a little. I'll be right back. I'll just cut through the cemetery. If the prayer service isn't too long, I'd have time to lead you beside distilled waters. <laughs> oh, Mortimer, that's the first time I ever heard you quote the Bible. I knew Elaine would be a good influence on you. Oh, by the way, I'm going to marry her. Oh, Mortimer! Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> Papa, Papa, come in here quickly, I have the most wonderful news. Mortimer and Elaine are going to be married. Oh, oh, no. No. oh, we hoped it would happen just like this. <laughs>
Oh, Elaine must be the happiest girl in the world. Happy? Just, just look at her leaping over those gravestones. Say, what's that? What's what, dear? I uh, see that statue there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a horn dinner to Carnina. Oh no, dear, that's Emma B. Stout ascending to heaven. Uh, no, no, standing on Mrs. Stout's left ear, that bird. Uh, that's a red-crested swallow. I've only seen one of those before in my life. Well, I don't see how you can be worried about a bird now. What with Elaine and the engagement and all? It's a vanishing species. Thoreau was very fond of them. Uh, by the way, I left a large envelope around here last week. It was one of the chapters of my book on Thoreau. Have you seen it? Well, if you left it here, dear, it must be here someplace. Well, what else can you tell us about Elaine and, and the marriage? What else can you tell us? Oh, Elaine loved it. What, dear? My chapter on Thoreau. Hmm. Oh, well, when Elaine comes back, we should have a celebration. We must drink to your happiness. Martha, is there any of that Lady Baltimore cake left? Oh, yes. And I'll open a bottle of wine. And just oh. think, it happened in this room. Oh, now, where could I have put that? Oh, Mortimer, I do hope that with your fiancé beside you tonight, the play will finally be something you can enjoy for once. It might be something romantic. What's the name of it? Murder Will Out. Oh, oh my. <laughs> And when the curtain goes up, the first thing you'll see will be a dead body. Ah! Hey! Hey! Hey, mister! Aunt Abby. Yes, dear. You were going to make plans for uh, Teddy to go to that sanitarium, Happy Dale. Oh, yes. In fact, Dr. Harper was here this afternoon and brought some papers for Teddy to sign. Here they are. Here Wait, they are. He's got to sign them right away. Oh, that's what Dr. Harper thinks. That way there won't be any legal difficulties after we've passed out. He's got to sign them this minute. He's down in the cellar. Get him up here right away. Oh, there's no such hurry as that, Oh, dear. no. Once Teddy starts working on the canal, you can't get his mind on anything else. Teddy's got to go to Happy Tale tonight. Now. No, dear. That's not until after we're gone. Right away, I tell you. Right away. Mortimer, you know that as long as we live, we'll never be separated from Teddy. Look, darlings. I'm frightfully sorry, but I've got some shocking news for you. Now, we've all got to try and keep our heads. You know we sort of humored Teddy because we thought he was harmless. But he is harmless. He was harmless. That's why he has to go to Happy Dale now. Why he has to be confined. Mortimer, how can you have turned against Teddy this way? Your own brother. You've got to know sometime. It, it might as well be now. Teddy's killed a man. Nonsense, dear. There's a body in the window seat. Oh, yes, dear, we know. <laughs> you, you know? Yes, dear, but it has nothing to do with Teddy. Now, Mortimer, now that you've seen the gentleman, just forget all about it. Forget? We never dreamed you'd peep. Uh, well, well, who is he? Hoskins, dear. Adam Hoskins. That's really all I know about him, except that he's a Methodist. That's all you know about him? Well, well, what's he doing here? What happened to him? He died. Aunt Martha, men don't just get into window seats and die. Oh, no, dear. He died first. Well, how? Mortimer, don't be so inquisitive. The gentleman died because he drank some wine with poison in it. Well, how did the poison get in the wine? Well, we put it in the wine because it's less noticeable. In tea, it has a distinct odor. You put it in the wine? Yes, and I put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat because Dr. Harper was coming to tea. So you knew what you'd done? You didn't want Dr. Harper to see the body? Well, not at tea, dear. That wouldn't have been very nice. <laughs> Mortimer, now you know all about it, just forget the whole thing. I think your Aunt Martha and I are entitled to our little secrets. And don't you tell Elaine. Oh, Abby, while I was out, I went to see Mrs. Schultz. She's feeling so much better, but she'd like us to take Junior to the movies again. Oh, all right, we must do that. Tomorrow or the next day. But this time we'll go where we want to go. 
He's not dragging me into another one of those scary movies. <laughs> Hello, City Desk. Hello, Al. Do you know who this is? That's right. Say, Al, when I left the office, I told you where I was going, remember? Well, where did I say? Uh-huh. Well, it would take me about half an hour to get to Brooklyn. What time have you got? That's right. I must be here. Aunt Happy, Aunt Martha, come in here. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do about what, dear? There's a body in there! Yes, dear, we know, Mr. Hoskins. Well, good heavens, I can't turn you over to the police, but what am I going to do? Well, for one thing, dear, you can stop being so excited. And stop worrying. We told you to forget the whole thing. Forget? My dear Aunt Abby, can't I make you realize that something has to be done? Mortimer! Behave yourself. You're too old to be flying off the handle this way. But Mr. Hodgkins is... Hodgkins, dear. Well, whatever his name is, you can't just leave him in there. Well, we don't intend to, dear. Oh, no. Teddy's down in the cellar digging the lock right now. You mean you're going to bury Mr. Hodgkins in the cellar? Oh, yes, dear. That's what we did with the others. No! <laughs> no. You can't bury Mr. Hodgkins in the... Others? The other gentlemen. When you say others, do you mean others? As in more than one others? Oh, yes, dear. This one is, let me see, it's, uh, it's 11, isn't oh, it, Abby? Oh, no, this is 12. Oh, I think it's only 11, dear. Oh, no, I remember that when Mr. Hoskins came in, I thought this would make just an even dozen. <laughs> well, I don't think you can count the first one, dear. Oh, but I was counting the first one, so this makes 12. Hello? Hello? Oh, my. Al, it's good to hear your voice. Well, anyway, they're all down Shh. in the cellar. No, Al, I'm sober as a lark. I just called you because I was feeling a little pirandello. Uh, pirin... You wouldn't know, Al. Uh, look, uh, you've got to do something for me. Get hold of George right away. He's got to review that play tonight. I can't make it. No, Al, you're wrong. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Look, you get a hold of George. This is my department and I'm running it. Where was I? Twelve? Yes, dear. Abby thinks we should count the first one, and that makes twelve. All right. Now, who was the first one? Mr. Midgley. He was a Baptist. But I still say we can't claim full credit for him because he just died. Martha means without any help from us. You see, Mr. Midgley came here looking for a room. It was just after you moved to New York. And it seemed such a shame for that lovely room upstairs to be going to waste when so many people could use it. Oh, he was such a lonely old man. All his kids and kin were gone, and it left him so lonely and forlorn. We felt so sorry for him. And then, when his heart attack came, and he sat dead in that chair, remember, Martha? He looked so peaceful that we thought... Then and there, if we could help other lonely old men to that same peace, we would. He, he dropped dead right in that chair. How awful for you. No, dear, not really. It was rather like old times. Your grandfather always had a cadaver or two lying around the house. And Teddy had been digging in Panama, and he thought Mr. Midgley was a yellow fever victim. And that meant that he had to be buried right away. So we all went down to Panama and put him in the lock. So you see, dear, that's why we told you not to worry, because we know exactly what needs to be done. And that's how all this got started, that man walking in here and dropping dead. Of course, we realized that we couldn't depend upon that happening again. So 
You remember those jars of poison on the shelves in Grandfather's laboratory all those years? And you know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. You've eaten enough of her piccalilli. <laughs> for one gallon of elderberry wine, I add one teaspoon of arsenic, half a teaspoon of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. Should have quite a kick. Oh, yes. In fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. <laughs> well, I've got to get things started in the kitchen. Oh, I'm so sorry you can't stay to dinner, dear. I'm trying out a new recipe. No, I couldn't eat a thing. Well, I feel so much better now. Oh, you have to wait for Elaine, don't you? Well, how happy you must be. I'll just leave you alone with your thoughts. <laughs> dum dum to dum dum to dum darling. Father could see that I was excited, so I told him about us, and that made it hard for me to get away. But listen, darling, he's not going to get up for you tonight. Uh, listen, Elaine, no, you just run along home, and I'll call you up tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow? Well, you know, I always call you up every day or two. But we're going to the theater tonight. No, no, we're not. Well, why not? Uh, Elaine, something's come up. What, darling? Oh, Mortimer. You've lost your job. Uh, no, no, no. I haven't lost my job. I'm just not covering that play tonight. Now, you run along home, Elaine. Oh, I've got to know what's happened. Certainly you can tell me. No, no, I, I can't. But if we're going to be married... Married? Have you forgotten that not 15 minutes ago you proposed to me? I did? Oh, 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 well, as far as I know, that's still on. But now, you run along home, Elaine. I I've got to do something. But listen, you can't propose to me one minute and throw me out of the house the next. I'm not throwing you out of the house, Elaine. Now, will you get out of here? No, I will not get out of here. Not until I've had some kind of explanation. For goodness. Elaine! <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Al. Uh, hold on a minute, will you? All right, it's important, but it can wait a minute, can't it? Hold on. Look, Elaine, you're a sweet girl, and I love you very much, but I have something very much on my mind right now, and I want you to go home and wait for me to call you. Oh, don't try to be masterful. When we're married and I have problems to face, I hope you're less tedious and uninspired. And when we're married, if we're married, I hope I find you adequate. Well, just... Oh... Elaine! Elaine, do come back! Oh, for heaven's sake. Elaine! Elaine! Oh, goodness. Hello? Hello, Al? Hello? 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 Oh, that's the doorbell, not the telephone, dear! Hello! I understand you have a room to rent. Yes, do step in. Are you the lady of the house? I'm Miss Brewster, and this is my sister, another Miss Brewster. My name is Gibbs. Oh, well, do sit down. I'm sorry, we were just setting the table for dinner. Uh, yes, uh, hello, City Desk. Uh, let me talk to Al again. City Desk. Al! What? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, wrong number. May I see the room? Oh, let's sit down and get acquainted. That's not going to do much good if I don't like the room. Is Brooklyn your home? Don't have a home in a hotel and don't like it. Hmm. Hello, City Desk. Are your yes. family Brooklyn people? Don't have any family. 
all alone in the world. Yep. Well, Martha, ooh. Well, you've come to just the right house. Do come over and sit down. Uh, hello, Al. Uh, yes, uh, Mort. I'm sorry, we got cut off. Uh, look, Al, I, I can't cover the play tonight. That's all there is to it. I can't. What church do you go to? There's an Episcopal church practically next door. I'm Presbyterian, used to be. What's George doing in Bermuda? Uh, well, certainly I told him he'd go to Bermuda. It's my department, isn't it? Well, you've got to find somebody. Who else is there around the office? Is there always this much noise here? Oh, he doesn't live here. Mortimer, Mortimer. Yes, 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 of course, of course. Well, there must be somebody else around the place. Uh, look, Al, how about the office boy? You know, the bright one, the one we don't like. Well, you look around the place. I'll hold on. You know, I'd really like to see the room. Oh, yes, but why don't you try some of our wine before we start upstairs? Never touch it. We make it ourselves. It's elderberry wine. Elderberry wine? I haven't tasted elderberry wine since I was a young lad. Thank you. Well, there must be some printers around. Uh, look, Al, uh, the fellow who sets my copy, he ought to know about what I'd write. His name is Joe. He's the third machine from the left. Uh, but look, Al, he might turn out to be another Burns mantle. Do you have your own elderberry bushes? No, but the cemetery is full of them. No, Al, I'm not drinking, but I'm going to start now. You serve meals? Well, we might, but first see if you like our wine. Mortimer. Oh, no, Mortimer, not that. No, no, no. Ah! 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 Get, out of here. Get out of here. Do you want to be killed? Do you want to be murdered? Get out. Ah! Everything. You can't do that. I don't know how to explain this to you, but it isn't only against the law. It's wrong. It isn't a nice thing to do. People wouldn't understand. He wouldn't understand. Abby, we shouldn't have told Mortimer. Well, what I mean is, this has developed into a very bad habit. Mortimer, we don't stop you from doing the things that you like to do. I don't think you should interfere with us. Hello. Oh, all right. I'll see the first act and pan the hell out of it. Uh, but look, Al, you've got to do something for me. Get hold of O'Brien, our lawyer, the head of our legal department. Have him meet me at the theater. Now, don't let me down. Okay, I'm starting now. Look, I've got to go to the theater. There's no way I can get out of it. But before I go, I want you to promise me one thing. We'd have to know what it was first. I love you very much, and, and I know you love me. I would do anything in the world for you, and I want you to do just this little thing for me. What do you want us to do? Don't do anything. I mean, don't do anything! Don't let anyone in here and leave Mr. Hoskins right where he is. Why? I need time to think, and, and I've got quite a little to think about. You know I wouldn't want anything to happen to you. Well, what on earth could happen to us? Anyway, you'll do this for me, won't you? Well, we were planning to hold funeral services before dinner. Services? Certainly. You don't think we'd bury Mr. Hoskins without a full Methodist service? Why, he, he was a Methodist. Yes, but that can wait until I get back, can't it? Oh, yes! Mortimer, then you could join us! Yes! Yes! Oh, Mortimer, you'll love the services, especially the hymns! Martha, remember how beautifully Mortimer used to sing before his voice changed? And remember, you're, you're not going to let anyone in the house while I'm gone. It, it's a promise. Well, oh, oh, Martha, we can do do that now that Mortimer's cooperating with us. All right, dear. Good, good, good. Oh, oh, I'll need some paper. There's a man I've got to see. I'll try to get back as quickly as I can. Well, there's some stationery. Will that do? That'll be fine. I can save time if I write my review on the way to the theater. Oh. 
Mortimer didn't seem quite himself today. No, but I think I know why. Why? Well, he's just become engaged to be married. I suppose that always makes a man a little nervous. Oh, I'm so happy for Elaine. And I think their honeymoon will give Mortimer a real vacation. I don't think he got much rest this summer. Well, at least now he will go kiting off to Spain or China or one of those places. I never could understand why he wanted to go to all those places. Well... I think for Mortimer, the theater has always seen small potatoes. Mortimer needs something big to criticize. That's the human race. Oh, Abby, if Mortimer's coming back for the services, we'll need another hymnal. I have one in my room. Oh, Martha, I know that it's my turn to read the services, but since you weren't here when Mr. Haskins came, I want you to do it. Oh, Abby, that's so sweet of you. But are you sure? Oh, yes. It's only fair. Oh, I'm going to wear my black bombazine and mother's old rose. Oh, who could that be? You promised Mortimer we wouldn't let anyone in. Oh, yes. Well, uh, who do you suppose it is? I'll look. It's two men, and I've never seen them before. There's a car parked at the curb. They must have come in there. Oh, let me see. Do you recognize them? No, they're strangers to me. We'll have to pretend we're not at home. Yes. escape from this place. Now I'm glad to escape back into it. Yeah, Johnny, it's a fine hideout. The family must still live here. There is something so unmistakably Brewster about the Brewsters. I hope there's a fatted calf awaiting the return of the prodigal. Yeah, I'm hungry. Look, Johnny, drinks. As if we were expected. A good omen, Doctor. Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, it's Jonathan. You get out of here. I'm Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Well, you're nothing like Jonathan. Who are you? I am Jonathan, and this is Dr. Einstein. Well, that's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein, Dr. Herman Einstein. Well, who are you? What do you want? Get out here. I see you're still wearing that lovely garnet ring Grandmother Brewster brought back from London. Oh. You want Martha, still the high collars to hide the scar where Grandfather's acid burned you? His voice is like Jonathan's. Have you been in an accident? No. Oh, my face. Yes. Dr. Einstein is responsible for this. He's a plastic surgeon. He changes people's faces. But I know that face. Abby, do you remember when we took the little Schultz boy to the movies and I was so frightened? It was that face. <sighs> ah, easy, Johnny. Ah, don't worry, ladies. In the past five years, I give Johnny three new faces. I give him a new one right away. That last face, well, uh, yeah, I saw that picture too, just before I operate, but I was intoxicated. You see, Doctor, uh, you see what you've done, even my own family. Johnny, you're home in this lovely house. How often he tells me about Brooklyn, about this house, about the aunts he loves so much. Johnny, they know it's you. Ladies, this is Jonathan. Speak to him. Tell him so. Oh. Well, uh, Jonathan, uh, you've been away a long time. What have you been doing? Yes, Jonathan, where have you been? England, South Africa, Australia. Oh, for the last five years, I was in Chicago. Dr. Einstein and I were in business there together. We were in Chicago for the World's Fair. Yes. We found Chicago awfully warm. Yeah, it got hot for us, too. But it's wonderful to be back in Brooklyn again. 
You, Abby, Martha, you don't look a day old, just as I remembered you. Sweet, charming, hospitable. Oh, and dear Teddy, did he ever get into politics? My little brother, Doctor, was determined to become the president. Well, Teddy's fine. He's just fine. And Mortimer's fine, too. I know all about Mortimer. I've seen his picture at the head of his column. He's evidently fulfilled his promise of an earlier nasty nature. We're very fond of Mortimer. Well, Jonathan, it was very nice to see you again, but... Bless you, Aunt Martha. It's good to be home again. Oh, well... Uh... Uh, Martha, we'd better not let what's on the stove boil over. Hmm? Martha? Oh, oh, yes. Yes, if you'll excuse us for a moment, Jonathan. Unless, of course, you're in a hurry to go, go somewhere. <laughs> How, Johnny, where do we go from here? We gotta think fast. The police, the police have pictures of that face. I gotta find a place to operate. We gotta find a place to do that. And we gotta find a place for Mr. Spinozzo, too. Don't waste any worry on that rat. But, Johnny, we got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinozzo. Oh, we got a dead body in the rumble seat. Oh, you shouldn't have killed him, Johnny. He was such a nice fellow. We give him a lift and then what happens? He said I look like Boris Karloff. Uh, That's your doing, Doctor. You did that to me. Easy, Johnny. I'll find some place I fix you up quick. Tonight. Uh, no, Johnny, uh, I'm hungry. Uh, I'm big. I gotta eat first. Well, Jonathan... We're very glad that you remembered us and took the time to come in and say hello, but you were never very happy in this house, and we were never very happy with you in it, so we've just come back in to say goodbye. Oh, Aunt Happy, I can't say that your feelings for me come as a great surprise. I have spent a good many hours regretting the heartaches I must have caused you as a boy. <laughs> You certainly were a child to us, Jonathan. But my great disappointment is for Dr. Einstein. I promised him that no matter how much of a rush we were coming through Brooklyn, we would take time to stop here and have one of Aunt Martha's delicious home-cooked dinners. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm afraid that there wouldn't be enough. Well, it's a pretty good-sized pot roast, Abby. Pot roast. But I think the least we can do is... Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll <laughs> stay to dinner. Well... Well, we'll just hurry things along then. Yes. Um, Jonathan, if you'd like to freshen up, you can use the washroom in Grandfather's old laboratory. Is that still there? Oh, yes, just as he left it. Well, I'll just help Martha get things started in the kitchen since we're all in such a hurry. Well, at least we get a meal. Grandfather's laboratory, and just as it was, Doctor, a perfect operating room. Yeah, too bad we can't use it. But after you're done with me, Doctor, we could make a fortune here. The laboratory, a large ward in the attic, ten beds, Doctor. And Brooklyn is crying out for your talents. Oh, why work yourself up, Johnny? Anyway, I think for Brooklyn, better here too late. Oh, you don't know this town, Doctor. Practically everyone in Brooklyn needs a new face. Ah, oh, but so many of the old faces are locked up. Oh, just a small percentage. And the boys in Brooklyn are famous for paying generously to stay out of jail. Yeah, but your aunts, they don't want us here. We're staying for dinner, aren't we? Yeah, but after dinner... Leave it to me, Doctor. I'll handle this. This place will be our headquarters for years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that would be beautiful. This nice, quiet house, those sweet old ladies. Oh, I love them already. I go get the bags, yeah? Doctor, you must wait till we've been invited. But you just said... We'll be invited. But what if they don't want us? Doctor, two helpless old women. <laughs> oh, yeah. It comes true like a beautiful dream. Only this time, I hope we're not dreaming. It's so peaceful here. Yeah, that's what makes this house so perfect for us. It's so peaceful. <laughs>
Yes, aunties, those five years in Chicago were amongst the busiest and happiest of my life. And then from Chicago, we go to South Bend, Indiana. They would not be interested in our experiences in Indiana. Well, Jonathan, you've certainly had an interesting life, but we've kept you talking far too late. By meeting Dr. Einstein in London, you might say changed the whole course of my life. You remember I was in Johannesburg for the diamond business, then I went to Amsterdam for the diamond market, and I wanted to return to, to South Africa, and Dr. Einstein made it possible for me. Oh, good job, Johnny. Why, when we take off the bandages, his face looks so different, the nurse had to reintroduce us. <laughs> I loved that face. I still carry a picture of it with me. <laughs> well, this looks more like you used to look, but uh, I still wouldn't recognize you. Yes, Doctor, I think we'll go back to that face. Yeah, it's safe now. <laughs> I'm sure you two must be in a hurry to get to wherever it is you're going. My dear aunties, I am so full of that delicious dinner, I am unable able to move a muscle. Yeah, I like it here. After all, it is very late. I found it! I found it! What, <laughs> what did you find, Penny? The story of my life, my biography. Here's the picture I was telling you about, General. Uh, here we are, both of us. Uh, President Roosevelt and General Gothels at Calabria Cut. Oh, my, how I've changed. Well, actually, this picture hasn't been taken yet. We haven't even begun work on the Calabria Cut. We're still digging locks. Uh, and now, General, we will both go to Panama to inspect the new lock. Oh, no, Teddy, not to Panama. Yeah, we go some other time. Panama's a long way off. Nonsense. It's just down in the cellar. In the cellar? We let him dig the Panama Canal in the cellar. General Goffles. As President of the United States, Commander-in-Chief of the Army and the Navy, and the man who got you this job, I demand that you accompany me to Panama to inspect the new lock. Teddy, I think it's time you went to bed. Well, I beg your pardon, then. Who are you? I'm Woodrow Wilson. Go to bed. <laughs> no, you're not Wilson, but your face is familiar. You're not even one I've met yet. Perhaps later. Yes, that's it. On my hunting trip to Africa, you look like someone I might meet in the jungle. Oh, it's your brother Jonathan, dear. He's had his face changed. So that's it. A nature faker. Well, uh, perhaps you had better go to bed, Teddy. Jonathan and his friend have to go back to their hotel. General Gothels, inspect the canal. Oh, all right, Mr. President. We go to Panama. Oh, funny. Follow me. <laughs> It's down south, you know. <laughs> well, bon voyage. Aunt Abby, I want to correct your misapprehension. You spoke of our hotel. We have no hotel. We came directly here. Oh, but Jonathan, you can't stay here. We need our rooms the for our lodgers. There are lodgers living here in this house? Uh, no, not right now, but we plan to have some. So my old room is still free. Well, yes, but there wouldn't be room for Dr. Einstein. You'll share the room with me. Oh, Jonathan, you can't stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need a place to sleep. If you remember this afternoon that as a boy, I could be very disagreeable. It would not be pleasant for any of us if I were to be... But perhaps it would be all right if you stayed just for tonight. Well, all right, just for tonight. That's settled then. If you'll just get my room ready. It only needs airing out. We keep it ready to show our lodgers. I'm sure you and Dr. Einstein will be very comfortable. You have a very distinguished guest in Dr. Einstein. I'm afraid you don't recognize his talents, but you will. In a few weeks, you'll see a very different Jonathan. He can't operate on you here. Oh, and when we become organized, when we get our business started, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're turning Grandfather's laboratory into an operating room. We expect to be very busy. Jonathan, we will not let you turn this house, this house into a hospital. Hospital? Oh, heavens no. It will be a beauty parlor. <laughs> hey, hey, Johnny, down in the cellar. Doctor, my dear aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh. Oh, you fixed me. Well, you're sleeping here just for tonight. Please get our rooms ready immediately. Well, just for tonight. Hey, Johnny, I go down to the cellar and what do you think I find? What? 
the Panama Canal. The Panama Canal. Yeah, it just fits Mr. Spinalzo. It's a whole teddy dog, six feet long, four feet wide. Well, down there. Yeah, you would think that they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinalzo along. Now, that's hospitality. <laughs> it's rather a good joke on my aunts, too, <laughs> living in a house with a body buried in the cellar. <laughs> yeah. well, how did we get him down there? Oh, yes, we can't just walk him through the front door. Oh, we'll bring the car, car out behind the house by the cemetery, and after they've gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinalzo in through the window. Oh, bed, bed, bed! Just think we got a bed tonight, Johnny! Easy does it, Doctor. Remember, you're operating tonight, tomorrow. Uh, and this time you'd better be sober. Oh, don't worry about it, Johnny. I'll fix you up beautiful. If you don't. Uh, Jonathan, your room is ready. Then you can go to bed. We're moving the car out behind the house. It's all right where it is for tonight. We don't want to leave it on the street. It might be against the law. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to let them stay in this house more than one night, that's for certain. What would the neighbors think? The people coming in here with one face and going out with another. What are we going to do about Mr. Hoskins? <gasps> Mr. Hoskins, I've forgotten all about him. Oh, it can't be very comfortable for him in there. And he's been so patient, the poor dear. Well, later on, we'll have Teddy take Mr. Hoskins down to Panama. Abby? I will not invite Jonathan to the funeral services. Oh, no! Later, after Jonathan and Dr. Einstein have gone to bed, we'll come back downstairs for the services. Oh, General Vessels was very pleased. He says the canal is just the right size. Teddy, <laughs> Teddy, there's been another yellow fever victim. Oh, dear. This will be a shock to the general. Then we mustn't tell him about it. Oh, but it's his department. Oh, but it would spoil his visit. I'm sorry, Aunt Abby. It's out of my hands. Army regulations, you know. Oh, but we must keep it a secret. Yes. A state secret? Yes, a state secret. <laughs> Thomas. You have the word of the President of the United States. Cross my heart and hope to die. <laughs> now, how are we going to keep it a secret? Well, Teddy, you go back down to the cellar, and later on, when I've turned off all the lights, when it's all dark, you come back up and take the poor man down to Panama. <laughs> all right, go along, Teddy, go along. And then later on, we'll come down and hold the funeral services. Yes. Oh, oh. You may announce that the president will say a few words. Uh, uh, where is the poor devil? In the window seat. Oh, dear me. It seems to be spreading. We've never had yellow fever there before. Martha, as soon as Jonathan and Dr. Einstein come back, let's see if we can get them to go to bed as quickly as possible. Yes, and by the time they're asleep, we'll be in our funeral clothes. Yes. Abby? I've never even seen Mr. Hoskin. Oh, my goodness, that's right. You were out. Well, you just come along and see him right now. <laughs> you know, he's really very nice looking, considering he's a Methodist. <laughs> We're bringing the bar uh, the luggage in through here. Well, Jonathan, you can go right up. Your room is ready. We don't exactly keep Brooklyn hours, but you two run along to bed. Oh, uh, no, you must both be very tired, and we don't normally go to bed this early. Well, you should. <laughs> it's time I came home and took care of you. But we weren't planning to go to bed. Aunt Martha, did you hear me say, go to bed? Take these instruments up to the laboratory in the morning. Now we're all going to bed. Uh, well, uh, I'll just wait down here till you're all up and I'll turn out the light. Move along, Aunt Martha. Oh. All right, Abby. One more floor up, Doctor. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Now, Abby, turn out the lights. Oh. Oh. 
We should introduce ourselves. This is Dr. Einstein. Dr. Einstein? A surgeon of some distinction and something of a magician. And I suppose you're going to tell me you're Boris Karloff? <sighs> I'm Jonathan Brewster. Oh, uh, uh, you're Jonathan. I see you've heard of me. Uh, yes, uh, just this afternoon for the first time. And what did they say about me? Only that there's another brother named Jonathan. That's all that was said. Well, that explains everything. Now that I know who you are, I'll just be uh, running along. Oh, if you'll uh, kindly unlock the door. That explains everything. Exactly what did you mean by that? And what are you doing coming over here at this time of night? I, I thought I saw someone prowling around the house. I suppose it was you. I thought you saw someone prowling around the house? Yes. W weren't you outside? Is that, that your car? You saw someone by the car? Yes. What else did you see? I'm just someone walking around the house to the car. What else did you see? Just that. That's all. That's why I came over here. I wanted to tell Miss Abby to call the police. But if that was you and that's your car, then I, oh, I, I don't need to bother Miss Abby. I'll just uh, be uh, running along. Oh. 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 What did you see the man doing at the car? Oh, I don't know. I just saw him on my way over here. I think you're lying. Oh, I think she tells the truth. Let's oh, let her go, Johnny. No, I think you're lying. Breaking into a house this time of night. I think she's dangerous. She oh, not be let around loose. Doctor, help me! Doctor, looking at you. It will be a private funeral. Teddy, Teddy, tell these men who I am. What? Oh, that's my daughter, Alice! Ah! <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, I get you. Oh, 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 quickly. We caught a burglar, a sneak thief. Well, go back to your room. Oh, I will call the police. We've called the police. We'll take care of it. Back to your room. Do you hear me? Oh, To the Nora Bay's Theater, and I should have known better. My God, I'm still there. It's your brother, Jonathan! I know this isn't a nightmare, but what is it? 
I've come back home again, Mortimer. Who did you say this was? It's your brother, Jonathan. He's had his face changed. Dr. Einstein performed the operation. Jonathan? Jonathan, you always were a horror, but do you have to look like one? Easy, Johnny! Mortimer, have you forgotten what I used to do to you when we were boys? You remember the time you were tied to the bedpost? The needles under your fingernails? My God! It is Jonathan! Yes, I remember. I remember you as one of the most detestable, venomous, vicious forms of animal life that ever lived. Now don't you two boys start quarreling the moment we've seen each other again. There won't be any fight, Aunt Abby, Jonathan. You're not wanted here. Get out. Dr. Einstein and I have been invited to stay. Not in this house. Well, just for tonight. I don't want them anywhere near me. Well, we did invite them for tonight, and it wouldn't be polite to go back on our word. All right, tonight. But the first thing in the morning, out. Where are they sleeping? Well, we put them in Jonathan's old room. That's my old room. I'm sleeping in that room. I'm here to stay. Oh, Mortimer, I'm so glad. Uh, we sleep down here tonight. Yeah, you bet your life you sleep down here. Yeah, you sleep on the sofa, and I sleep on the window seat. The window seat? Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> let's not argue about it. That window seat's good enough for me tonight. I'll sleep on the window seat. <laughs> All of this argument, it makes me think about Mr. Spinozzo. Spinozzo. Oh, now, Mortimer, there's no need to inconvenience you. We'll sleep down here. Your sudden consideration for me is very unconvincing, Jonathan. Come on, Charlie, we go get our bags, yeah? You're just wasting your time, Doctor. Uh, by the way, Doctor, I, I've completely lost track of Mr. Spinozzo. Say, who is this Mr. Spinozzo? Oh, uh, he's just a friend of ours who Johnny has lost track of. Yeah, well, don't bring anyone else in here. Come on, Johnny, I'll tell you all about it. Well, Mortimer, you don't have to sleep down here. I, I'll go in with Martha and you can take my room. No trouble at all, Aunt Abby. We'll be packed in a moment then, Mortimer. You can have the room. You're just wasting your time, Jonathan. I told you. I'm sleeping down here. Mortimer. What's the matter with you, dear? I've almost been killed. You've almost been... Abby. Oh. Martha. No, no, no. It was Jonathan. She mistook her for a sneak thief. Oh, no. It was more than that. He's some kind of maniac. Mortimer, I'm afraid of him. Oh, darling, you're trembling. Uh, have you got any smelling salts? No, but do you think a cup of tea or coffee? Oh, coffee. Uh, make some for me, too. And some sandwiches. I haven't had any dinner. Oh, we'll make something for both. Oh, well, Martha, I think we can leave our hats down here now. Mm. Were you two going somewhere? Do you know what time it is? It's after 12. 12. Elaine, you've got to go home. What? We'll just get some coffee and sandwiches. We'll be a moment. Don't you remember? We were going to celebrate your engagement. Now, I know what we'll do. We'll make a nice little dinner for both of you, and we'll open a bottle of wine. All right. No wine! Mortimer, what's going on in this house? What do you mean, what's going on in this house? Well, you were supposed to take me to dinner in the theater tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I said I would. And then five minutes later, you threw me out of the house. Tonight, just after your brother tries to strangle me, you want to chase me home. Now listen, Mr. Brewster. Before I go home, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? Of course I love you, Elaine. I love you very much. In fact, I love you so much, I can't marry you. Have you suddenly gone crazy? No, I don't think so, but it's just a matter of time. <laughs> you see, insanity runs in my family. It practically gallops. <laughs> That's why I can't marry you, dear. Now, wait a minute. You've got to be better than that. No, no, dear. There's a strange taint in the Brewster blood. If you really knew my family, it's, well, it's what you'd expect if August Strindberg had written Hells of Poppin. Oh, now, just because Teddy is a little strange. No, it goes way back. The first Brewster, the one who came over on the Mayflower. You know, in those days, the Indians used to scalp the settlers. He used to scalp the Indians. Oh, Mortimer, that's ancient history. No, the whole family. Take my grandfather. He tried his patent medicines out on dead people to be sure he wouldn't kill them. Well, he wasn't so crazy. He made a million dollars. And then there's Jonathan. 
Uh, you just said he was a maniac. He tried to kill you. But he's your brother, not you. I'm in love with you. Uh, and then there's Teddy. Y you know Teddy. He thinks he's Roosevelt. No, dear. No Brewster should marry. I realize now that if I met my father in time, I'd have stopped him. Oh, darling. Well, this doesn't prove that you're crazy. Look at your aunts. They're Brewsters, aren't they? <laughs> And the sanest, sweetest people I've ever known. Well, even they have their peculiarities. Yes, but what lovely peculiarities. Kindness, generosity, human sympathy. There's another one! Oh, Lord of Murr, there are plenty of others. You can't tell me anything about your aunt. I'm not going to. Uh, look, Elaine, uh, you've got to go home. Something suddenly has come up. Ah, except for where? We're alone here together. Uh, look, I know I'm acting irrationally, but just put it down to the fact that I'm a mad booster. <laughs> oh. If you think you're going to get out of this by acting insane, you're crazy. You may not be going to marry me, but I am going to marry you. I love you, you don't. Well, what if you love me? Will you get the hell out of here? Mortimer, you'll at least take me home, won't you? I'm afraid. Afraid? A little walk to the cemetery? Uh, Mortimer, you, you'll kiss me goodnight, won't you? Well, uh, of course, dear. <laughs> Well, good night, dear. I'll call you up in a day or two. Uh, you, you critic! Ooh. Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha, come in here. I'll be in in a minute, dear. Come in here now. Oh well, yes, dear. What is it? Oh, well, where's your name? I thought you promised me not to let anyone in this house. Well, Jonathan, I don't mean Jonathan. Well, Dr. And I don't mean Dr. Einstein. 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 Who's Einstein? in the window seat? We told you, Mr. Hoskins. That is not. Mr. Hoskins. Well, who can that be? Oh. Are you trying to tell me that you've never seen that man before? Oh, well, that's a fine how do you do. It's getting so that anybody thinks they could just walk into this house. Now, Aunt Abby, don't you try to get out of this. That's another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say that? is an imposter! And if he's come here to be buried in our cellar, he's mistaken! Aunt Abby, you admitted to me that you put Mr. Hoskins in the window seat. Well, yes, I did! Well, that man couldn't have just got the idea from Mr. Hoskins. By the way, where is Mr. Hoskins? <gasps> Teddy must have taken him down to Panama! Oh, you buried him! Well, no, not yet. We haven't had a moment with Jonathan in the house. We've always wanted to hold a double funeral. But I will not read services over a total stranger. A stranger? Aunt Abby, now there are 12 gentlemen in the cellar, and you admitted to me that you poisoned them. Yes, I did. But Mortimer, you don't think I'd sink to telling a fib? Mortimer! Mortimer, I want to have a word with you. A word's about all you'll have time for, Jonathan, because I've decided that you and your doctor friend are going to have to get out of this house just as quickly as you can. I'm glad you recognize the fact that you and I could not live under the same roof, but you've reached the wrong solution. Now take your suitcase and get out. Jonathan, you're beginning to bore me. You've played your one-night stand in Brooklyn. Now move on, Mortimer. Just because you've moved from the back fence to the typewriter does not mean you've grown up. Now I'm saying and you're leaving, and I mean now. If you think I can be frightened, if you think there's anything I fear... I've lived a very strange life, Mortimer, but it's taught me one thing. To fear nothing. Martha, just look and see what's in the window seat. <laughs> now, now I'm happy. happy. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Jonathan, let Aunt Martha see what's in the window seat. Aunt Abby, I owe you an apology, and I have some very good news for you. Jonathan is leaving. He's taking Dr. Einstein and their cold companion with him. Jonathan, you're my brother. You're a Brewster. I'm going to give you a chance to get away and take the evidence with you. You can't ask for more than that. Very well. 
I'll just have to call the police. Don't you touch that telephone. Are you still giving me orders now that you've seen what's happened to Mr. Spinalzo? Spinalzo? I knew he was a foreigner. Mm. Remember, what happened to Mr. Spinalzo can happen to you too. Oh, well, now who can that be? <laughs> Oh, hello, Miss Abby. Oh, Officer De Niro. I saw your lights on. Thought there might be sickness in the oh, house. Well. Oh, you've got company. Sorry to disturb you. No, no, well, come right in. Yes, come in. Come in, Officer De Niro. This is our nephew, Mortimer. Oh, pleased to meet you. And this is another nephew, Jonathan. Oh, pleased to make your acquaintance. Must be nice having your nephews visiting. Are they staying for a bit? I'm staying. Uh, Jonathan is just leaving. Oh. I've met you here before, haven't I? Oh, well, Jonathan's been away for a very long time. Oh, your face looks awfully familiar to me. Maybe I've seen a picture of you somewhere. I don't think so, no. Uh, that's right, Jonathan. I'd hurry if I were you. Your things are all packed anyway, aren't they? Oh, uh, you'll be wanting to say goodbye. I'll be running along. Oh, wait, oh, well, wait. what's the rush? Uh, I'd like to have you stick around until my brother goes. Oh, I just stopped by to make sure everything was all right. We're going to have some coffee in a minute. Oh. Won't you join us? I forgot all about the coffee. And I'd better make some more sandwiches. I ought to know your appetite by now, Officer De Niro. Oh, Bob, I'll do a ring in in a few minutes. You can have a cup of coffee with us. Oh. Uh, sit down. My brother will be gone soon. Say, uh, ain't I seen a photograph of your brother around here someplace? I don't think so. He certainly reminds me of somebody. He looks like somebody you've probably seen in the movies. No, oh, I don't go to the movies. I hate them. My mother said the movies is a bastard, Art. Yeah, it's full of them. Your uh, mother said that. Yeah. My mother was an actress, a stage actress. Perhaps you heard of her, Peaches Latour. Sounds like a name I've seen in a program. What did she play? Well, her uh, big hit was Martin Jeff. Uh, played it for three years. I was born on tour the third season. You were? Yep. Sioux City, Iowa. I was born in the dressing room at the end of the second act. Mother made the finale. What a trooper. You know, there must be a good story in your mother. I write about the theater, you know. You do? Say, you're not more than a Brewster, the dramatic critic. Yes. Oh, I certainly am glad to meet you. <laughs> Say, Mr. Brewster, we're in the same line of business. We are? Hey, I'm a playwright. Being on the police force, it's just temporary. How long have you been on the force? Twelve years. I'm collecting material for a play. I'll bet it's a honey. Well, it ought to be. With all the drama I see being a cop, Mr. Brewster, you got no idea what goes on in Brooklyn. I think I have. Say, uh, what time you got? Uh, ten after one. Yeah, I gotta ring in. Oh, what's, uh, what's the rush, De Niro? On that play of yours. I think I can help you. You would? Say, it was fate me walking in here tonight. Look, I'll tell you the clock. Oh, you're on your way, huh? Well, good. You haven't got much time, you know. <laughs> well, everything's just about ready. Oh, Jonathan, are you leaving? Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Dr. Einstein. Oh, doesn't this case belong to you? Uh, yes, uh, that's right, Jonathan. You, you can't leave without taking everything with you, you know. Uh, well, De Niro, it was nice meeting you. Uh, we'll get together sometime. Oh, I ain't leaving now, Mr. Brewster. Why not? Well, you offered to help me with my play, didn't you? You and me, we're going to write my play together. Uh, I can't do that, De Niro. I'm not a creative writer. Oh, I'll go to creating. You just put the words to it. But, De Niro... Uh, no, I ain't leaving this house till I tell you the plot. Oh, well, that's case, Mortimer. We'll just be running along. Don't do that. You can't go yet. You've got to take everything with you, you know. Uh, De Niro, uh, look, my brother's leaving, so why don't you go and ring in? Uh, I can wait. I've been waiting 12 years. Sorry, I was so long. But don't bring that in here. Uh, uh, Officer De Niro, would you join us for a bite to eat in the kitchen? The kitchen? Jonathan's leaving. Oh. Well, that's now. Come along, Officer De Niro, into the kitchen. Are you sure you don't mind eating in the kitchen, Officer De Niro? And where else would you eat? <laughs> well, goodbye, Jonathan. Nice to have seen you again. I'm glad you came back to Brooklyn, Jonathan, because this gives me a chance to throw you out. And the first one out is your boyfriend, Mr. Spinalzo. Look, oh, Mr. Brewster, we can talk in here. Oh, I'm just uh, finishing up some dance steps. I'll be right in a minute. I'll uh, be right with you. I might have known you'd grow up to write a play with a policeman. Get going now, all three of you. 
This affair between my brother and me has got to be settled, Doctor. Now, Chad, if you've got trouble enough, your brother gives us a good chance to get away with what could you ask? Do you have to understand? This goes back a good many years. Let's get going, Johnny. We're not leaving. We're sleeping right here tonight. Yeah, with a, with a cop in the kitchen and Mr. Spinozzo right in the window seat. That's all they've got on us. We'll take Spinozzo down and dump him in the bay, then come back here, and then if he tries to interfere... Oh, we'll... Johnny! You know when I've made up my mind, Doctor. Yeah, I know when you make up your mind, you lose your head. Brooklyn ain't a good place for you. Doctor! Uh, all right. All right. These stick together. Uh, maybe someday we get stuck together. Uh, listen, if we have to come back here... Do we have to take these with us? No, leave them here. Oh, but hide the instruments down in the shower. Quick, move yeah. quickly. Mr. Spinozzo can go out the same way he came in. Hey, John! What is it? You know that hole in the cellar? Yeah, but I think we got an ace in the hole. Come, I show you. Jonathan! 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 Yes, ma'am! Oh, I thought I told you two to get it We're not leaving. Oh, you don't think I'm serious about this, huh? We're I staying you right want, here. I suppose you want De Niro to know what's in that window seat. We're staying right here. All right. Have it your way. This gets me rid of you and De Niro at the same time. If you tell Officer De Niro what's in the window seat, I'll tell him what's down in the cellar. The cellar? Yes, there's an elderly gentleman down there who seems to be very dead. <laughs> what were you doing in the cellar? What's he doing in the cellar? No, thanks, ma'am. They were fine. I've had plenty. Uh, now, what was it you were going to say to De Niro? Say, Mr. Brewster, your aunts, they want to hear it too. Shall I get them in here? Oh, oh no, we can't do that now, De Niro. You've got to ring in, remember? Uh, how are we to ring it in? I'll get your aunts in here and tell you to plot. No, De Niro, not, not in front of all these people. We'll get together alone or someplace later. How about the back room at Kelly's? Fine. Uh, we'll get together at Kelly's and uh, you, you go ring in on the way. Why don't the two of you go down into the cellar? Oh, oh that's all right with me. Is that the cellar? Uh, no, no, uh, Officer De Niro. <laughs> we'll get together at Kelly's, but you have to ring in, remember? All right. I guess it'll take a couple of minutes, though. Coming right behind all you. Right. I'll ditch this guy in five minutes. When I come back, I'll expect to find you gone. Wait for me. <laughs> Oh, we'll wait for him, all right. I've been waiting for years for a chance like this. <laughs> now, Johnny, we got him right where we bought him. Boy, did he look joking. Doctor, take the bags back up to our room. Yeah. Have they gone? Oh. Oh, uh, we thought we heard someone leaving. It was just Mortimer, but he'll be right back. Is there any food left in the kitchen? I think Dr. Einstein and I would enjoy a bite. But you won't have time. No, if you're still here when Mortimer gets back, he won't like it. Oh, he'll like it. He's got to like it. Fix us something to eat while we bury Mr. Spinozzo in the cellar. No, no. Jonathan, you can't put him in the cellar. You've got to take him with you. Oh, there's, a, there's a gentleman downstairs, a friend of Mortimer's waiting for him. A friend of Mortimer's? Yes, I think he and Mr. Spinozzo will get along just fine. They're both dead. <laughs> he must mean Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins? You know what's down in the cellar? Well, yes, but... He's no friend of Mortimer's. He's one of our gentlemen. Your gentlemen? Yes. And we will not have any strangers buried in our cellar. But Mr. Hoskins... Mr. Hoskins isn't a stranger. And, and besides, there wouldn't be any room for Mr. Spinozzo. The cellar is crowded already. Crowded? With what? Well, there are 12 graves down there now. 12 oh, graves? Yes. So you see, that leaves very little room, and we're going to need it. You mean that you and Aunt Martha have murdered? Murdered? Oh, no. Why, it's one of our charities. Why, we consider what we do a mercy. So you, you see, you just take your Mr. Spinozzo and get out. But you have done all that right here in this house and buried them all down there. <laughs> uh, Charlie... We travel all over the world. They stay right here in Brooklyn and do just as good as you do. What? Well, you got 12 and they got 12. I've got 13. Oh, 12, Charlie. 13. 
Mrs. Panazzo, the first one in London, two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, two in San Francisco, one in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix? A filling station. Oh, yeah. Three in Chicago, and the one in South Bend, that makes 13. No, no, you can't count the one in South Bend. He died of pneumonia. Well, he wouldn't have died of pneumonia if I hadn't have shot him. No, Johnny, he died of pneumonia. He don't count. Well, he counts with me, I say 13. No, Johnny, you got 12, and they got 12. These old ladies are doing just as good as you are. Oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more. Just one more. Well, here I am. to Jonathan, you just wait. You'll find out I'll settle this. Well, how can he settle it if he's out of the house? That's what we want settled. What's going on down there? All right. Now, where's Teddy? Mortimer, where have you been? I've been over to Dr. Gilchrist. I, I've got a signature on Teddy's commitment papers. What, what, what is the matter with you? Running around getting papers signed in a time like this. You know what Jonathan is doing? He is putting Mr. Hoskins and Mr. Spinozzo in together. Oh, he is, is he? Well, what him. Is Teddy in his room? Teddy won't be any help. When I get his signature on these commitment papers, I can tackle Jonathan. Well, what have they got to do with it? You had to go and tell Jonathan about those 12 graves. If I can make Teddy responsible for those, I can protect you, don't you see? No, I don't see. And besides, we pay taxes to have the police protect us. I'll be back down in a minute. Ma Martha, come with me. We're going for the police. All right. The police! <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't go for the police. Why not? Because if you tell the police about Mr. Spinalzo, they find Mr. Hoskins, too. And that might make them curious. And then they find out about your other 12 gentlemen. Oh, Mortimer, we know the police better than you do. And I don't think they'd pry into our personal affairs if we asked them not to. But if they find your 12 gentlemen, they'd have to report to headquarters. I don't think they'd bother. They'd have to fill out a very long report. And if there's one thing a policeman hates to do, it's to write. You can't depend on that. It might leak out, and you couldn't expect a judge and jury to understand. Oh, Judge Collingwood. Oh, yes, we know him very well. He comes to church every Sunday to pray, just before election. And he's going to come here to tea one day, he's promised. Oh, Abby, we must speak to him again about that. His wife died several years ago, left him very lonely. 
But come along. Uh, no, no, I, I can't let you do this. You can't leave the house, and you can't tell anyone about Mr. Hoskins or Mr. Spinalzo. Well, if, if you're not going to do something about Mr. Spinalzo, we are. I am going to do something. We may have to bring the police in later, but if we do, I want to be ready for them. You have to get Jonathan out of his house. And Mr. Spinalzo, too. Now, will you please let me do this my own way? Now, I've got to talk to Teddy. Well, they've got to be out of here by morning. Oh, they'll be out of here, I promise you that. Yes. Now, for heaven's sake, go to bed, will you? And, and get out of those clothes. You look like Dame Judith Anderson. Well, Abby, that's a relief, isn't yes. it? I suppose if Mortimer is finally going to do something, then Jonathan's just going to a lot of unnecessary trouble. We'd better stop it. Oh, Jonathan. But you can just stop doing whatever it is you're doing. It's all done. Did I hear Mortimer? Well, then it will just have to be undone. Mortimer said you're going to be out of this house by morning. Oh, yeah. Well, then in that case, you and Aunt Martha can go upstairs and have a pleasant night's sleep. Yes, come, Abby. <laughs> Mortimer good night, said, aunties. Well, not good night, Jonathan. Goodbye. Mortimer said you're to be out of here by morning. He's promised. And he has a way of doing it, too. Then he is back, is he? Yes, he's just up here talking to Teddy. Goodbye, Jonathan. Goodbye, Jonathan. Well, perhaps you'd better say goodbye to Mortimer. Oh, no. You'll see Mortimer. <laughs> yes, I'll see Mortimer, all right. <laughs> Well, he got that all fixed up. Smooth like a lake. Nobody would even know there was anybody down there. Ha! 48 hours without any sleep. Oh, that bed feels good already. Come on, Charlie, let's go up. You're forgetting, Doctor. What? My brother Mortimer. Oh, uh, uh, we take care of that tomorrow or the next day. No, tonight, now. Oh, but, Charlie, uh, I'm tired. And, uh, tomorrow I gotta operate. Yes, tomorrow you operate, but tonight we take care of Mortimer. Uh, come on, Charlie, let's go. Look at me, Doctor. You can see it's going to be done, can't you? Yeah, I see. I know that look. It's a little late for us to sever our relationships now. Yeah, okay, Charlie, we do it. But we do it the quick way, like in London. The quick twist. No, Doctor, no. This calls for something special. I think perhaps... <laughs> the Melbourne method. Oh, no, not the Melbourne method. What? <laughs> After two hours, what? The fellow in London is just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. Oh, we had to work too fast in London. There was no aesthetic pleasure. But Melbourne, now that was something to remember. <laughs> oh, I wish I could forget. No, Johnny, not Melbourne, not me. Yes, Doctor. Where are the instruments? Oh, you hid them down in the cellar. Where? I won't tell you. Well, then I'll find them, Doctor. No, Mr. President, don't do that. But I cannot sign any proclamation without first consulting my cabinet. Uh, yes, but this must be done in secret. A secret proclamation? How unusual. Japan mustn't know until it's signed. Japan? Those yellow devils... I'll sign it right away. I can let the cabinet know tomorrow. Yes, let's go sign it now. No, no, you wait here. A secret proclamation must be signed in secret. But at once, Mr. President. Well, first I must get on my signing clothes. Of course. Signing. <laughs> oh, boy. It's never going to end. Uh, excuse me, yeah, you go now. Uh, no, Dr. Einstein, I'm waiting for something, something very important. No, please, you go now. Look, Dr. Einstein, I have nothing against you personally. You seem to be a nice fellow. Now take my advice and get out of this house just as quickly as you can. Oh, trouble, yeah, get out. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, uh, I'm warning you, get away quick. Things are going to start popping around here any minute. Oh, you don't know. Uh, Johnny's in a real bad mood. Uh, and then it gets like this, he's a madman, and things happen, terrible things. Uh, Jonathan doesn't worry me. Oh, uh, God, don't those plays teach you anything? About what? Well, at least the people in those plays act like they got sense. That's a lot more than you do. Oh, you think so, huh? You think people in plays act intelligently? <laughs> I wish you had to see some of the ones I have to sit through. Uh, take the little opus I saw tonight, for instance. In this play, there's a man. He's supposed to be bright. He knows he's in a house with murderers. Uh, he, 
he ought to know he's in danger, right? He, he's even been warned to get out of the house. But does he go? No. He stays there. Now I ask you, doctor, is that what an intelligent person would do? You're asking me? He doesn't even have sense enough to be frightened, <laughs> to be on guard. Uh, for instance, the murderer invites him to sit down, right? <laughs> oh, oh, you mean like, uh, uh, won't you please sit down? Believe it or not, that one was in there too. I uh, did right. He sat down. Now, mind you, this fellow is supposed to be bright. There he sits, waiting to be tied up. <laughs> and, and what do you suppose they use to tie him with? What? The curtain cord. Oh, the curtain cord. Uh, very good idea. Very good. Uh, very clever. A little too clever. Now, when are these playwrights going to use some imagination? Uh, the curtain cord. <laughs> and uh, he didn't even see him cut it down? See him? He had his back to him. Now, this is the kind of stuff we have to sit through night after night. They say that. They say the critics are killing the theater. It's the playwrights who are killing the theater. So there he sits, the big dope, this fellow who's supposed to be bright, just waiting to be trussed up and gagged. <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, you know something? I think that you're right. I think that the fellow in that play wasn't very bright now, was he? <laughs> and now, Mortimer, if you don't mind, we're going to finish that story. Mortimer. I've been away for 20 years, but never once in all that time have you been out of my mind. <laughs> One night in Melbourne, I dreamed of you. <laughs> and when we landed in San Francisco, I had the strange premonition that we were going to be still again in the same country. <laughs> Doctor, now we go to work. All right, Charlie, but for me, please, the quick way. Oh, no, Doctor. This must be an artistic achievement. Mm. After all, we are performing before a very distinguished critic. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Doctor. All right. We get it over. Mm. Yes. Mm. All ready for you, Doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I need a drink. I can't do this without a drink. Pull yourself together, Doctor. Uh, Tony, when we was here this afternoon, there was mine. There is that. Oh, look, vine! <laughs> Good. We got vine. Come on, Charlie, I split it with you. You're forgetting your manners, Doctor. Baltimore, I know now that you are the reason I came back to Brooklyn. <laughs> ah. Doctor, mm -hmm. to my dear dead brother. <laughs> He goes next, that's all. No. He goes next. No, no, Penny, that's where I stop. We'll get him later. No, we don't get him at all. Now we've got to work fast. Yeah, the quick way. Yes, Doctor, the quick way. Mm. Mm. Uh, the Colonel's got a quick uh. blown at horn. Oh, oh, well, it's all right. Uh, we're going to take it away from him, officer. It's going to be hell of pain in the morning for this. We promised the neighbors he wouldn't do that anymore. No, no, no. I promise it'll never happen again, officer. Good night. Uh, I better speak to myself. Where are the lights? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hey, you stood me up. I waited an hour at Kelly's for you. What happened to him? Ah, uh, well, the play. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, the play. He was telling us about the play, so this is what happened to the fellow with the play. Did they have that in that play you saw tonight? Mm. Gee, they practically stole that from the second act of my play. Mm. Why am I second act just before the... I'd better begin at the beginning. Mm. Mm. It opens in my mother's dress room mm. when I was born. Mm. Only I ain't born yet. Mm. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nah, you're gonna hear the plot. Well, she's sitting there making up, see? When all of a sudden, through the door, a man with a black mustache walks in. Mm. He turns to my mother and says, Miss Latour, will you marry me? He doesn't know she's pregnant. <laughs> is lying unconscious across the table in a lingerie. The Chinaman is standing over her with the hatchet. I'm tied up in a chair just like you are. The place is an inferno of flames. It's on fire. When all of a sudden in through the window comes Mayor LaGuardia. See you now! Ah! Ah! 
Hey, remember who paid for that? Go easy on it. Well, I'm listening, ain't I? Uh, how do you like it so far? Then you woke Johnny up. Ah, uh, let him alone. Uh, if he ain't got no more interest than that, he don't get a drink. All right. It's three days late. I've been transferred, and I'm under charges. Mm. That's because somebody stole my badge. Mm. All right. I'm walking my beat on Staten Island, 46th mm. Precinct. When a guy I'm following turns out, he's really following me. Don't let anybody in. So I figure you all out smart. Mm. I see the vacant house on the corner. I go in. Mm. I stab him in the dark. And I see the door handle turn. Mm. Mm -hmm. I pulls my gun. Cops, Trace myself over against the wall and says, come in. Hello, boys. Oh, boys. What the hell is going on here? Hey, Pat. What do you know? This is Mortimer Brewster. He's helped me write my play. I'm just telling him the story. Did you have to tie him up to make him listen? So you better report it at the station. The whole force is out looking for you. And they send you here for me. We didn't know you was here. We came to warn the old ladies that there's hell to pay. The colonel went and blew that bugle again in the middle of the night. From the way the neighbors have been calling in about it, do you think the Germans have dropped a bomb on Flatbush Avenue? The lieutenant's on a warpath. He says the colonel has to be put away someplace. Yes. Yes, gee, Mr. Brewster, I gotta get away. So I'll run through the dirt that quick. Get away from me. Hey, you know what time it is? It's after 8 o'clock in the morning. It is. Gee, Mr. Brewster, that first and second act, it run a little long. But I don't see anything we can leave out. You can leave it all out. Who the hell's this guy? That's my brother. Oh, the one that ran away. So he came back, huh? Yes, he came back. This is Brophy. Get me Matt. You better let him know we found you, Joe. Yeah, Matt. Tell the lieutenant he can call the big man out. We got him. Yeah, he's in the Brewster house. Wants to bring him in? All right, well. The lieutenant's on his way over. Oh, I've been turned in, eh? All right, you got me. I suppose you and that stool pigeon brother of mine are going to split the reward. Reward? Oh, now I've got some turning in to do. You think my aunts are sweet, charming little old ladies, don't you? Well, they've got 13 bodies buried in their cellar. What the hell are you talking about? Now, you just hey. better be careful what you say about those answer years. They happen to be friends of ours. Oh, you come with me. I'll show you. I'll prove it to you. Come wait, here. Wait a minute. Come down in the cellar with me. 13 bodies. I'll show you where they're buried. Yeah? Yes. Come along. Don't you want to see what's in the cellar? Let's go down in the cellar with him, Abe. Well, I'm not so sure I want to go in that cellar with him. Look at that puss. He looks like Boris Karloff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, well, I don't think you're going. Coming. What the hell are you men doing here? I told you I was going to handle this. Well, that we was just about to. And then he's... What did he do? Put up a fight? This isn't the fellow that closed the bugle. This is his brother. He tried to kill Klein. All I said was he looks like Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff? Let me take a look at him. We kind of think he's wanted somewhere. Oh, you kind of think he's wanted somewhere? If you guys don't look at the circulars that we hang up in the station house, at least you could read True Detective magazine. Of course he's wanted somewhere. In Indiana, he escaped from a prison for the criminally insane. He's a lifer. It's exactly how he was described as that he looked like Boris Karloff. Is there a reward mentioned? Yeah, and I'm claiming it. He was trying to get us to go down into the cellar. He said there was 13 bodies buried down there. 13 bodies buried in the cellar. That didn't tip you off that he's fresh off the funny farm? <laughs> I thought all along he sounded kind of crazy. Oh, it's Shakespeare. Where the hell have you been all night? And you need not bother to tell oh, me. Oh, I've been right here, right in my play with Mortimer Brewster. <laughs> oh, you have? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to have plenty of time to write that play now, because you're suspended. Get back to the station house and report in. Can I come back sometime and use that station typewriter? No. Get out of here. Take that guy someplace and see if you can bring him to. And while you're at it, see if you can find his accomplice. That's right, the guy that helped him escape. He's wanted too. No wonder Brooklyn has problems with a police force full of flatheads like you falling for that story about 13 bodies in the cellar. But there are 13 bodies in the cellar. Who are you? I'm President Roosevelt. <laughs> What the hell is this? Now, he's the fellow that blows the view. Good morning, Colonel. <laughs> Colonel, you've blown your last bugle. What is this? Another yellow fever victim? What? All the bodies in the cellar are yellow fever victims. No, Colonel. This is a spy that we caught in the White House. 
Will you get that guy out of here? Well, if there's any questioning of spies, that's my department. You stay out of this. You forget, as president, I am also the head of the Secret Service. I'm Mortimer Brewster. Are you sure? I'd like to talk to you about my brother, Teddy, uh, the one who blew the bugle last night. Yeah, that's one thing we're not going to talk about, Mr. Brewster, because he's got to be put away. I quite agree with you. In fact, it's all been arranged for. I've had his commitment paper signed by our family physician, Dr. Gilchrist. Teddy has signed them himself, and I've signed them as next of kin. Where's he going? Happy Dale. I don't care where he goes, as long as he goes. Oh, he's going all right. But I wanted you to know that everything that's been going on around here is Teddy's responsibility. Now those 13 bodies in the cellar... Oh, yeah, 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 those 13 bodies in the cellar. I mean, it ain't bad enough that he scares the hell out of half the neighborhood, and he blows that blasted bugle at all hours of the day and night. But can you imagine, just imagine what would happen if word of that cockeyed story about 13 bodies in the cellar ever got out? And now, now he's starting a yellow fever scare. He's cute. <laughs> Expecting bodies in the cellar. Yeah. <laughs> you suppose anybody would believe that story? <laughs> uh, you never know what some people believe. It. About a year ago, out in Greenpoint, some crazy guy starts a, a murder rumor. And I had to dig up a half-acre plot just to prove Excuse that... me, would, would you? Good morning, Mortimer. Uh, good morning, dear. This is Mr. Witherspoon. He's come to meet Teddy. To meet Teddy? Oh, Mr. Witherspoon is the superintendent of Happydale. Oh, 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 come right in. <laughs> this is uh, Captain... Uh... Lieutenant Rooney, I'm glad you're here, superintendent. You can take him along with you today. Today? I didn't know no, that. not today. Uh, look, Elaine, we have some business to take care of, so just uh, run along home and I'll call you. <laughs> Nuts. I had no idea it was this immediate. Oh, absolutely. The papers are all signed. He's going with I'm you today. I'm pleading subordination. Ah, you men will find out I'm no volley coddle. Well, when the president of the United States is treated this way, what, what's this country coming to? Here's your man, superintendent. Just a minute. Uh, uh, Mr. President, I have some very good news for you. Your term of office is over. Oh, is it March the 4th? Practically. Well, now, let's see, what do I do now? Ah, yes, I go on my hunting trip to Africa. Well, I must get started right away. <laughs> oh. Is he trying to move into the White House before I've moved out? Who, Teddy? Taft! Oh, this isn't Mr. Taft. <laughs> no, no, this is Mr. Witherspoon. He's to be your, uh, he's to be your guide in Africa. Oh, bully, well, I'll get my equipment down right away when the safari comes. Tell them to wait! <laughs> oh, goodbye, Aunt Abby. Goodbye, Aunt Martha. I'm on my way to Africa. Isn't it wonderful? Charge! Charge! Good morning, darlings. Oh, visitors, how nice. Uh, there's two gentlemen I'd like you to meet. Uh, this is Lieutenant Rooney. Oh, Lieutenant Rooney! My, you don't look like the fuss budget the policemen say you are. Why, uh, the lieutenant is here because... Well, you know, Teddy blew his bugle again last mm -hmm. night. Yes, dear, we're going to speak to him about that. I'm afraid it's a bit more serious than that, Miss Bruce. And you haven't met Mr. Witherspoon. He's oh. the superintendent of Happy Dale. Mr. Witherspoon, how do you do? You're here to meet Teddy. He's come to take Teddy. Uh, aunties, the police think that Teddy should go there tonight. Oh, oh no, not while we're alive. I'm sorry, Miss Brewster. It has to be done. The papers are signed. He's going today. Oh, we won't permit it. We'll take the bugle away from him. We won't be separated from Teddy. I'm sorry, ladies. The law is the law. He's committed himself. He's going. Well, if he's going, then we're going too. Yes. You'll have to take us with him. Well, well, why not? Well, it's very sweet of them to want to, but it's impossible. I can't take sane people to Happy Dale. Mr. Witherspoon, if you let us go there with Teddy, we'll put Happy Dale in our will and for a very generous amount. Well, Lord knows we could use the money, but I'm afraid... Now, let's be sensible about this, ladies. For instance, here I am wasting my time today when I have so many important other things to do. Do you have any idea how many unsolved murders there are in Brooklyn? Yes. Oh, 
are there? And it's not just the bugle blowing and scaring the neighbors, but it could get much worse than that. Sooner or later, we'd be put to the trouble of digging up your cellar. Our cellar? Yes, your nephew in the kitchen there has been telling around that you have 13 bodies buried in your cellar. Oh, but there are 13 bodies in the cellar. Oh. <laughs> yes. If that's the reason why you think Teddy has to go away, well, you come right downstairs with us and we'll prove it to you. Oh, well, there's one down there, Mr. Spinalzo, who doesn't belong there and he'll have to leave. But the rest are our gentlemen. I don't think the lieutenant wants to go down in the cellar. Uh, he was telling me only last year he had to dig up a half-acre lot, weren't you, lieutenant? That's right. Oh, but you wouldn't have to dig here. The graves are all marked. And we put flowers on them every Sunday. Flowers? Are you sure you don't have room for these ladies out in Happy Dale? Well, well, if you don't believe us, just come right along and we'll show you. That's the all right, lady. I'll take your word for it. I'm a busy man. How about it, Superintendent? Well, they have to be committed. Teddy committed himself. Couldn't they commit themselves? Couldn't they sign the papers? Oh, certainly. Oh, well, if we can go with Teddy, we'll sign the papers. Where are they? Yes, where are they? Where are they? He's coming around, Lieutenant. Oh, Officer Klein, good morning. Oh, good morning, Mr. Klein. Are you here, too? Yeah, me and Brophy have got your other nephew out in the kitchen. Mm. That's right, Super. Sign him up. I want to get this all cleaned up today. 13. If you'll sign, oh, right here. Martha Brewster. And you here, Aunt Abby. Yes, yes. <laughs> Abigail Brewster. Oh, I'm looking so forward to going. The neighborhood here has changed so. Just think, a front lawn again. Yes. <laughs> have we forgotten something? Yes, I, we, yes, we have so forgotten something. We need the signature of a doctor. Ooh. A doctor? Oh, uh, Dr. Einstein. <laughs> Dr. Einstein, come right over here. We'd like you to sign some papers. Oh, but I think I must... Just come right over, Doctor. Distinguished Dr. Einstein. He tried to operate on me just last night. <laughs> sign right here, Doctor. Dr. Einstein. Are you leaving, Doctor? Yes, I think I must be going. Oh. Aren't you going to wait for Jonathan? No, I, I don't think we're going to the same place, I hope. Oh, oh hello, Elaine. <laughs> nice to see you. You're going to stick around, aren't you? Oh, don't worry. I'm going to. Great. Hello, Mac. This is Rooney. Well, we nabbed that guy that was wanted in Indiana. Yeah. Now, there's a description of his accomplice right there on the desk. Would you be good enough to read it to me? Uh-huh. Green eyes, 50 years old. Six feet one, 230 pounds. Speaks with a German accent. Poses as a doctor. Thank you, Mac. Well, uh, it, it's all right, Lieutenant. Uh, the doctor made the... Complete the signatures. Doctor, may I shake your hand? Do you know what a service you've done for Brooklyn? Thank you. I'll be with it. Bye, bye. Mr. Brewster, if you will sign as next of kin. Uh, of course, right here? Yes, that's fine. Mortimer. This makes everything complete, uh, everything legal? Yes, certainly. Well, how about that, Andy's? You're safe now. When will you be ready to leave? Oh, well, um, Mr. Witherspoon, why don't you go upstairs and tell Teddy what he can take with him? Upstairs? Yes. I'll show you. Oh, no, no, Mortimer, you stay here. We want to talk to you. All right, Mr. Witherspoon, just upstairs and to the left. Well, Mortimer, now that we're leaving, this house really belongs to you. Yes, Mortimer, we want you to live here now. I don't think so, Aunt Abby. This house is too full of memories. But you'll need some place to live when you and Elaine are married. Now, darlings, that's very indefinite. It's nothing of the kind. We're going to be married right away. Mortimer, Mortimer, we're really very worried about something. Don't worry, darlings. You're going to love it at Happy Dale. Oh, yes. We're very happy about that. That's just the thing. We don't want anything to go wrong. Will they investigate those signatures? No, I don't think they're going to look up Dr. Einstein. It isn't his signature, dear. It's yours. You see, you signed as next of kin. Of course. Uh, why not? Well, dear, it's something we never wanted to tell you. But now you're a man, and it's something Elaine should know, too. You see, dear, you're not really a Brewster. 
Your mother came to us as a cook, and you were born about three months afterwards. She was such a dear woman and such a good cook that we couldn't bear to lose her, so brother married her. I'm not really a Brewster. Oh, don't feel badly about it, dear. And it won't make any difference to you, will it, Elaine? Elaine, did you hear that? Do you understand? I'm a bastard! <laughs> well, I really should see about breakfast. Mortimer's coming home with me. Father's gone to Philadelphia, and Mortimer and I are going to have breakfast yes, together. Yes, I could use some coffee. I've had quite a night. Well, then I should think you'd want to go right to bed. I do. No! <laughs> One moment, Witherspoon. Take this with you. <laughs> you won't need the paddy wagon. My car's right outside. Oh, Jonathan, are you leaving now? Yes, he's going back to Indiana. There's some people there who will care for him for the rest of his life. Come well, on. Jonathan, it's nice to know you have some place to go. We're leaving, too. Yes, we're going to Happydale. Oh, you mean this house is seeing the last of the Brewsters? Unless Mortimer wants to live here. Oh, I have a suggestion. Why don't you turn this property over to the church? Oh, I never thought of that. After all, it should be part of the cemetery. <laughs> Let's get going. I'm a busy man. <laughs> Goodbye, aunties. Now, I can't better my record, but neither can you. At least I have that satisfaction. The score stands even. Twelve to twelve. <laughs> Jonathan always was a mean boy. Never could stand to see anyone get ahead of him. I wish there was something that we could do to show him that he's not too smart. <laughs> Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Witherspoon. Mr. Witherspoon. Does your family live with you at Happydale? I have no family. I suppose you consider everyone at Happydale your family. I'm afraid you don't understand. As head of the institution, I must remain quite aloof. Oh, that must make it terribly lonely for you. It does, but my duty is my duty. Well, Martha. Ooh. Mr. Witherspoon, since we can't talk you into staying for breakfast, we at least can offer you a glass of elderberry wine. Elderberry wine? We make it ourselves. Oh, yes. Well, at the institution, we will. our relationship will have to be much more formal. You don't see much elderberry wine nowadays. I thought I had my last glass of it. Oh, no. Here it is.